it is almost April, oh, which means that it's almost Q2 of the year, but also that it is almost time for another writing challenge. So April is Camp NaNoWriMo. And if you don't know what that is, I'll explain what it is in a few minutes. But basically, it is another writing challenge. And I really want to be drafting something brand new. I have been working on the same story for like two and a half years, and I am so ready to start something brand new. So today we're going to talk about what are my goals for Camp NaNo? What do I hope to write in April? What am I trying to get done <laughs> before April starts? What tools am I using? And I have another free workbook for you today to download and print to help you with your own camp goals. So I'm pretty excited. Let's get started. Okay, so if you are not sure what Camp NaNoWriMo is, I'm going to explain it very quickly by saying that Every November, there's a challenge called NaNoWriMo, which is just short for National Novel Writing Month. And it happens in November. It's a global challenge to write 50K in 30 days, which is really a challenge. And it's not sustainable for a lot of people, which is why I love camp, because camp is an event that sort of spun off from NaNoWriMo that happens every April and every July but you can set your own rules. So you can write 10,000 words, you can set a goal to write 100 poems, you can write 10 blog posts, you can do an outline, you can edit your book, and you just set your own goal. You don't even have to participate in the official NaNoWriMo website if you don't want to, but you can always participate here with us in the Heart Breathings Writing Community. We've got Double Down Day coming up on Saturday, April 6th, I believe it is. We have a virtual writing retreat coming up this month, lots of support. Plus, if you sign up for my newsletter, which you'll find in the description box, you're going to get access to my entire HB resource library, which has dozens of downloads in terms of like how to plot your novel, how to edit your novel, how to plan your next writing project, how to write scenes, how to write a series, how to world build. There's tons of great stuff in there and you get it all for free. So that link is going to be down in the description. And if you are new here, welcome hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, introduce yourself in the comments. We're so happy that you're here. So I am an author and I have been working on the same book. It's called The Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. It's a YA supernatural mystery ghost story, basically, that I started actually back in 2019. Let it go for a little while, wrote a couple other books, but then I came back to it a couple of years ago and it, I thought it would just be a quick thing. <laughs> and it has turned into two full years of working on this book. And I'm getting very close, but I feel like I've been feeling close to the end of this book for six months. It's the most complex book I've ever written. It has dual timelines, multiple POVs. It's a standalone, which is more difficult for me than a series. There's just a lot of complicated things. I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot. It's also difficult. I was talking to some other like course creator, YouTubers, people that are um, helping the writing community in a lot of ways. While I was at the Future of Publishing Mastermind, which there is still a blog coming for that a vlog, but it's not up yet, um, who... They also said they've really been struggling to write because there's just a difference in creative energy between helping other people, creating courses, creating resources for writers and being able to just be a creator alone. And I'm definitely not complaining because being a course creator and helping writers has changed my life and I love it and I'm passionate about it. But I'm also passionate about my writing and I really want to get this book done and I want to start publishing again. And I also really want to start a subscription. So this is kind of where the big news comes in in terms of what I'm going to be working on for NaNo. My goals for camp in April very much are in line with my goals for all of Q2 and really setting me up for the rest of the year. Obviously, I hoped the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw would be done last year. <laughs> then I was sure it was going to get done this quarter. And it's been frustrating. It's been one of those things where it's like, I have to work up the motivation to continue to show up every day for it, even though it's hard. And I'm excited. I love the book, but I also feel like, why isn't it done yet? <laughs> so I'm recording this video on March 21st. So I have about 10 days, 11 days, really 10 before NaNoWriMo, Camp NaNo starts. And I'm really feeling nervous, but excited. I've been having some major breakthroughs on the edits. I've been getting consistent work done on the edits for Vanessa Shaw. So right now my 
hope is still that I'm going to finish that and have it off to beta readers and my editor and everything else before April 1st. At that point, during the month of April, I'll be continuing to work on final edits, putting the book up on pre-order, following through with my launch plan, and the book will hopefully be out in late April or early May. So we'll, we'll see how I do with it. It might end up kind of bleeding into the first week of April. I just hope and pray it doesn't end up taking the entire month of April. I mean, I'm going to love myself anyway, even if I can't seem to do it, but I'm just like hopeful that I can do it. I have been showing up for my writing every single morning, a lot of times in the afternoon, sometimes in the evenings, late on weekends. So I'm putting in the work. It's just the story is difficult and it has not been fully clear. So to say that I am excited to close the door on Vanessa Shaw, get it out in the world and see what everyone thinks, but also start a brand new book is an understatement. I love starting books. I love drafting. I do love the editing process usually, but this book has been more difficult and frustrating than any book I've ever worked on. So I think it's, I'm sort of done with the editing process here. And I'm just so excited for that brand new world kind of energy. So the book that I'm going to be working on for camp is something I've talked about here before, but it's not exactly a novel. It's a serial and it's called A Mirror of Shadows. It's a spinoff of my best-selling series, which is called The Shadow Demon Saga. And I'm so excited to be back in that world, but with new characters. And there will be some cameos from old characters that everybody knows and loves, but it's also going to be something that I can write to get myself back into that world while I'm rereading that whole series. So if you haven't been around and you're new to me, I write mostly young adult contemporary fantasy. And I'm sorry if you can hear my kids playing with the ball out there. There's nothing I can do about it at this point. Um, I write contemporary fantasy, a lot of portal fantasy, and this book is going to be a very clear portal fantasy. I have written 11 books plus five additional novels in the Shadow Demons world. And there's one more to go in this particular, like my main series, The Shadow Demon Saga. But I'm not at a place where I'm ready to jump from the, difficult, the difficulty of these edits into the like finish the final book of the series. So I'm about 60,000 words into that book, which is book 12 of the series. But like I said, I need to get my brain back into not only the fun and joy of writing, kind of getting over the difficulty of this edits and do something that just feels lighter and fun and something new. <laughs> Anybody get that feeling of like, I'm just ready for something new that gives me energy that makes me feel alive again. That's kind of where I am. And so I'm doing something very different with this story. So back in, I think it was 2015, I did a serialized story called Sacrifice Me. It was also a spinoff of my Shadow Demon Saga, and it introduced a whole new set of characters. And the way that was released was 20,000 words to 30,000 words per episode. And there were six episodes in a season, and there are two seasons. So total, it was about 240,000 words. And that serial was so much fun to write. I naturally write a lot of cliffhangers and a lot of fun, like endings to things. And I just really like it. And I also write fast paced. So I think my writing naturally lends itself well to serials. And I'm so excited to get back to that style of writing because I love it. And not just the style of writing, but a brand new way of introducing that writing to my readers, which is going to be through a serialized subscription. So I'll talk more about this on my channel later, but basically just to sort of let you know about it in case any of you want to come support me over there, I will be hopefully in the month of April starting a subscription on a platform called Ream. So reamstories.com, I believe is the website. And it is kind of like Patreon meets Wattpad. So you have the pay like subscription based model of a Patreon where people pay and they have different tiers and they get different rewards, but it's made for storytellers. And so it specifically is made to have a, you know, story serialized or early access, or there's so many creative things that people are doing with this platform. And I feel like it was made for me. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's made for everybody, but I feel I was made for it. Maybe a better way to say it. I love this style of writing. I love community and I'm super passionate about it. So having a community that I can publish series, serialized stories to like Monday, Wednesday, Friday chapters and getting feedback and building community through it and having lots of cliffhangers and fun surprises will just be so much fun. So I can't start that subscription until I have a story. 
And unfortunately, Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw doesn't lend itself well to that type of storytelling because with the dual timelines and everything, I think people need to just sit down and kind of read it for a prolonged period of time rather than getting it chapter by chapter. So this will be a brand new story written specifically for this style. And I know lots of you have been asking me, like, how do you plot a serial? Can you share with us how you're structuring that? And I totally will. So hopefully in the month of April and May, I'll be sharing with you how I'm plotting the story, how I'm writing it, what the pacing is like how it is starting a Ream subscription for anybody who's interested in doing it. The other great thing about Ream is that it's a way to get paid every single month kind of on a consistent basis for your writing rather than everybody buys a novel and then they don't hear from you for six months. It's like that community connection, but also that consistent income and connection with your fans. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I'll talk more about it later. But what I plan to do, hopefully, in a perfect world, is I'm going to finish Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw and get that out to beta readers and everything up for pre-order. And then I'm going to be free to move on from this book. So this was my, basically my B6 stalogy that was my plotting notes for this book. And when I originally started this notebook, I thought, no way, I'm gonna fill this all up with one book. But I did, it's almost completed. So I'll be starting a brand new one. So I have another B6 Stylogy ready to go and I'll show you all my supplies and everything. So part of my goals in April is not only to work on A Mirror of Shadows, but also to launch my Ream subscription to <laughs> set up and share how I'm plotting and how I'm setting up all my new like plans for this book. And I'm also gonna be, you know, doing launch of my first like re book release since 2021. So it's going to be quite the adventure of a month and I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm also really excited. <laughs> so, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you the stuff that I'm doing in terms of filling out the NaNoWriMo workbook that I've got for you guys down below. If you wanna download that, or if you're already on my newsletter list, I already sent you a link to download the new workbook. It comes in Sunday mix, Sunday, Monday mix start or just Monday start. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at all the supplies that I'm getting ready for Camp Nano and talk more specifically about how much I plan to write in the month of April. Okay, so let's take a look at all the supplies that I'm getting ready for camp and the camp workbook. I did create this in a printable for you. Like I said, that's either Sunday or Monday start like Sunday mixed or Monday start. I'll show you in a minute. And it's only in letter size and just those two versions. I did not make a digital one this year just due to time. But hopefully you can print this out and use it. And you can use it in conjunction with any of the previous, like how to plot your novel and stuff. And I'll share that with you. But I also wanted to talk about this baby. So I didn't do an official unboxing of this when it came in, but I backed this alpha from free, right? I think, gosh, over, well over a year ago in Indiegogo, and I have been dying for it to come out. Originally, it was only going to be in white, but then they also produced it in this black with the red, which I really, really like. It is super, super light, and I am excited to use this. I've had a few people have kind of caught a glimpse of it in some of my vlogs and have asked, how are you liking the alpha? But the truth is I haven't even used it yet because I've been editing and you can't very well edit on this type of device because you only get this much screen. So there'd be no way to like compare drafts and things like this. I almost always edit actually on two full size screens. So I haven't been able to use it. But many of you know from past years that I have a small collection of Alpha Smarts, and these are not made by the same company, but they did, FreeWrite did call this the Alpha as kind of a nod to this Alpha Smart. And the thing that's fun about it is that instead of it being a laptop where you have lots of distractions and notifications and access to pull up browsers and look at things, you basically just get this very small window to write. And so it's a focus tool, really. But these are very old and they're not as reliable. They're still great. I still use them when I'm ready to go out, but I was also excited to back this when I saw they were making it. It is, I would say actually lighter and we'll see how the keyboard does. Sometimes I kind of feel like my alpha, I like the keyboard better because it has that sort of indention for your fingers, like that natural fit. Whereas this is completely flat and I'm not used to typing on something that's quite this flat, except maybe on my old Chromebook. So we'll see how I like it and how it does with 
having nails and things like that. But one of the advantages is this does connect to the internet and it has backups and other things like that without having to like plug in your Alpha Smart and back it up that way. So I do enjoy this. I am excited to use it. So this is one of the tools and things that I'm using to get me excited for camp because since I'll be drafting, I can use this, which I will share with you as I use it, what I think of it. Some of the other tools that I kind of have ready are, I was mentioning before that my Sacrifice Me cereal was six episodes per season, but I think the way I'm going to do a mirror of shadows and we'll see how it comes through in the plotting, but I'm going to aim for four episodes per season. And those four episodes will make up four months of content on Ream. So let's say this color is episode one. That'll be, let's say all of May, then all of June, all of July, all of August. And then that serial, which is basically 20, 40, 60, 80,000 words or so will then be bundled up and published together as a set, but it will take four months for those to come out. So the way that I'm planning to do it, I'm just using this kind of as an example is this will be, let's say 20,000 words. So it'll be 5,000 words a week and it'll be, you know, about 1500 words per day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday coming out in chapters. I don't know that it will work up exactly like that, like tied up in a neat little ribbon in terms of the plot and things like that. I don't really write to spec in that way and not all my chapters are the same length. So it'll be a little bit different. I'm also hoping to put artwork in there and just some extras and bonuses and live streams and other things. It's gonna be super, super fun. So I have basically color coded as I do my different episodes. So you've got purple is probably going to be episode one, episode two. I'm not sure what order they're going to go three and four maybe. So we've got four episodes, four months, and the way I'm going to color code them in my calendar and in all my plans and I always have index cards. So the way I'll be color coding the index cards will all be according to this color code. And I'm pretty excited. So I have sticky notes, Tombos. I have a couple of Sharpie pens that match. I just don't have them all here. And then I use these page flags quite a lot. I actually have them on subscribe and save from Amazon because I use them so much in my plotting. And so these have more colors than just that, but they do have the four colors. So you've got the purple, the teal, either one of these will work yellow and pink. So I will be continuing to use those as part of the plotting. I like to use them as tabs and other things in here. So you can see just as an example, when I'm plotting in here, I'll use the tabs like this. And I just enjoy using that with a Sharpie and moving these around on my different plotting sheets and things like that. So those are the major supplies that I'm planning to use. I do as always have some whiteout and I have these little circle dots, transparent dots. I also have a B6 Stalogy. So this is a very flexible notebook and this is the same kind of notebook. So you can see that as you use it, you end up expanding it. So I have tip ins and washi tape and stickers and lots and lots of notes and things in here. So it will start out this small and it will get chunkier and chunkier. And mine actually isn't even that chunky compared to what some people end up with, but I do put them in these little covers. A lot of times I'll do like a washi dashboard and just some tip ins kind of like this one here uh, so that I can add a little bit of personality. So I've got the new Stalogy and I also have a new cover. So this comes from Salty Katie Co. It's basically the same cover. And then this time I did actually buy from her also a little folder so I can put like the sticky notes or some stickers or other things in here and just kind of put it into the middle. And then I also have this pen loop with it. I did also buy a new cover. So I love to use covers kind of like this Moterm that are vegan leather or even real leather. And then I can decorate the pockets and things like that and put stickers and store things, you know, here in the back and stuff like that. So I actually just bought my first ever Aura Estelle one that is purple and I'm hoping it's going to be beautiful. It's like a darker purple, like more like this purple. So I will share that full setup when I'm ready to share with you how I'm plotting this, the story. I also have these black 
tabs, these bow tabs from Planner Society. So all that is kind of my supplies. And then of course I have my actual planner, so to speak, or workbook. And this is what you guys can get for free. Now I have mine. I just printed it out letter size and punched it for these discs, but I'm actually going to reprint this. I'm just using this as an, as an example for today's video, but I will reprint this for my classic happy planner size. So if you want to see a video of that, I might put that up on Instagram for anybody interested in learning how to print it for a happy planner. So cover page, then we have just a little quote page. Your intuition knows what to write. So get out of the way. And then I redesigned this rewards planner that I have in here a little bit. So you've got five boxes in case you want to do five, like 10,000 words, 20, 30, 40, 50, if you're doing 50,000 words, but you could also say, you know, milestone is two chapters edited, four chapters edited, six, eight, 10, or it could be five blog posts. You just determine like if your goal is a hundred thousand words, divide that by five so that you're giving yourself five rewards. So when you reach it, you'll put a checkbox, but you'll start out filling this out by saying what the milestone is. So for me, my actual goal for camp is actually going to be in this next section here. So when we get to this camp 2024 goal page, project title is a mirror of shadows. So I'll go ahead and write that in portal fantasy for the win. I'm so excited. My April goal is going to be 40,000 words or episodes one and two. And did I say I tend to be very ambitious? It's like at this point, I don't even know for sure if I can finish Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw before April 1st. I have those 10 days to work on it. But then in addition, I'm going to show you my calendar in a second. And we're going to be like, can I actually write 40,000 words? I don't know. When I wrote Sacrifice Me, I wrote the first episode, which was about 20,000 words in a single night. And so if I get that kind of inspiration, totally doable to do 40,000 words. If it's slow, like Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, there's no way in heck I'm going to be able to do this. So this is aspirational, but I'm also setting my expectation at I'm going to do my best and that is going to be good enough. Even if it's 5,000 words, that's good enough. So daily target, we're going to figure that out in just a minute. But now that we have that 40,000 words here, I can divide that basically by five. So I have that 40,000 goal. So I'll put goal here is 40,000 total. So that will be the final milestone, 40,000 words. So we just divide that by five. So we end up with 8,000 for the first goal, 16,000 for the first or second, 24 and 32. So I've just divided that as best I can. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll choose a reward. And in terms of the date, what I think I'm probably going to do is I'm going to put a date due date. And then at the bottom, I'm going to put the date that I actually achieved it. So let's say I'm going to try to get those 8,000 words done by the 5th of April. That would be like the due date. And then if let's say I actually got it done by the 4th, I would do a checkbox and I would say, yay, I got it done on this day. That way I can have a little bit of a record of how it went as I was going through it. But when I'm choosing rewards, I will usually go through and pick something that feels motivating enough for me to want to get it. So rewards can be anything like what, reading a book, buying a new book, something you purchase for yourself, or it can be an experience like I'm going to get to spend the whole day outside or I'm going to go get a massage, but you can really do anything you want. My reward here, if I hit 40,000 words is I'm going to get a new DJI camera. So many of you know that I have, and even recorded the beginning of this video on a little stick camera called a DJI two, and I love it. Now they have a DJI pocket three and I want it but I'm going to try to earn it. And if I don't earn it for this camp, I'm going to wait until, you know, July and I'll try to earn it at that point. So that's my like big reward. I don't know yet what these other ones will be, but it might be something like halfway through or whatever. It might be like a massage. And then these will just be like, maybe like a movie night. 
or, you know, something along those lines, but come up with rewards that make you feel good, but that, you know, they don't have to be, if you're tight on a budget, they don't have to be things you're spending money on. It can just be a full day outside or a day at the park or whatever. Then we get into this full spread of the month. And this is one of the spreads. This is actually the only spread in the Monday versus the mixed start that changes is whether or not your Monday start or Sunday start on the April calendar. So I always do Sunday start on the April monthly calendars. So you have some instructions here to mark off any days this month that you won't be able to work. So for me, that is a couple of different things. So this weekend, even though this is the virtual writing retreat, by the way, so if you're around these three days will be really helpful in the heart breathings writing community. This is also double down day, by the way. So on those days we write extra, but this is also go wild, the planner conference and it's here in Dallas. And so I just can't miss it. Like Martha Stewart is speaking. Let me know if, in the comments if you're going to be there because we could do a Hardy's meetup for anybody who's going to be there, but otherwise you'll be able to participate in the virtual writing retreat, uh, which is, you know, arguably a better experience than go wild. I don't know. It's going to be amazing either way, but I am also going to be gone that following weekend because it is the Pikes Peak Writers Conference and I am speaking at that conference. And so I'm going to be gone two weekends in a row. And this makes me a little bit nervous because it's a lot of time off, but it's usually like when I go to conferences like this, can you imagine, are these three days going to be super productive for me? Probably not. It'll probably be like washing my clothes, trying to kind of come down from the, all the energy expenditure and stuff of go wild. And then I'll be packing and getting my presentations nailed down for getting back on the road. So I feel like these three days are a little bit iffy too, which is why I said, I don't know if this is a realistic goal. The other thing is as we get into May, like not this week, but the week that'll be after that, I'm also going to Boston for the Ream uh, subscriptions for authors conference. So there's a lot of travel for me this year. And I, one of the things that's sort of a goal for me in Q2 with all the travel and all the conferences is find a way to manage my energy so that I can write some on the plane and in the hotels because otherwise if I'm not working at all then this is just lost time and I don't want it to be that way because it, it will be too much of a sacrifice so that's part of my goals we'll talk about that in my Q2 reset video but otherwise things are looking pretty good here I don't have I do have an event on this day and this day and then now I'm trying to remember exactly which day uh, Holly Jackson, who wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, has a new book coming out called The Reappearance of Rachel Price, I think is what it's called, which is surprisingly very similar in title to my book. Um, and I think it's going to be cool. So she is going to be signing books here in the Dallas area. And I'm going to that signing. And I think maybe it's the 6th or the 13th, but I'm like, is it in May? I don't remember. I've got to look it up and see what day that won't be a lost day for work, but it will be, you know, there'll be other things going on. But then the next thing is you choose whether or not you want to add in any buffer days. And if so, how many do you want to add in? So because I'm not hundred percent certain about these days right here, and also this day coming back, I'm going to build in four buffer days, then tally up your total days off and subtract this from there's a typo from 30. I'll fix that before you guys download it. Subtract that from 30 because there's 30 days in the month. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we would say 30 minus 12 gives me um, 18. Every time I do this, I'm always like, well, that sucks. <laughs> it's never as much writing time as you think it's going to be. So I have available... Divide your custom target by the number of total writing days. So basically you take whatever your goal is. So mine's 40,000 divided by whatever your number of days you're going to be working. So 40,000 divided by 18. So that gives me a target of about 22, 22 words a day on my writing days, which is not unheard of for me. That is doable. So you divide it to get your custom ideal daily target, and then you just follow through with your plan. Now, if at this point you go through this process and you counted off your days, and then you divided your goal 
by the number of days and you're like, no way can I do 2000 words a day? That's just too much. It makes me feel overwhelmed. You might have a moment of feeling really sad because you're going to be like, I can't do that much. This goal isn't going to work out. And I really wanted it to, but it, trust me when I say it's so much better to just say, okay, I'm going to lower my goal. Then if you get extra and you get closer to that original goal, you did great. But if not, you don't beat yourself up. So what I love to do, like with HB90 is I'll set a good, better, best goal. So if I was afraid this 40,000 was too much because of this daily target, I might say good is 20K, better would be 30K and best would be hitting that 40K. So anything up to 20, which is half this 1111, is good enough and worth celebrating and it's a win but anything beyond that is just better right so give yourself a little bit of leeway there if you need to so my daily target over here becomes 22 22 which i feel like is a lucky number and then you can leave notes here about what days you're taking off what you're planning to write what your outlines like anything like that so project here is a mirror of shadows this little pixel tracker is meant to be used so you've got 10 boxes and then that means a thousand words per line and there's 50 lines. So what I will do when I'm printing mine out is I will go ahead and like use one color to dot out or whatever, 10 of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So these are not part of my goal and this is 40K. And you can go through and number these and say like 1K, 2K, 3K, but it gives you a way to chunk down your goal where like, let's say you sit down to write on day one and you get 200 words, you can fill in those 200. And then if you get another 800 words later in that day, you could fill into the full thousand and you can slowly start to see this coming to life. And you could, if you wanted to, have a different color for every day you work so that you can see like day one, I wrote 200 words, but day two, I wrote 800 plus, let's say another 500 words on day two. But then on day three, I wrote 3000 words. Then you would have that full um, 3000 marked on that day. And when you look back on it later, you could see exactly how your days went and where you had good days and where you had bad days and stuff like that. So that's how you use this tracker. If you're using it, if you're using it for edits or other things, just decide if you want to use this or not, it might work for you. It might not. We have a word count tracker here. I put this in all of my word count or all of my workbooks. So you've probably seen this before, but basically you just put the date in how much you got this sprint, meaning this 25 minute session or 20 minute session or whatever you do for a sprint, like a Pomodoro, what your total is for the day and then what your total is for the entire month so far. So let's say we're on the 15th of April here and let's say my sprint, I did like 200 words for sprint, that's 200 for the day. But that, because this is all filled out, maybe that's already at 28,200 words. So then I usually will just, I don't write the date in again, but what I'll do is I'll just keep track of each sprint. So let's say I wrote 600 the next sprint. So I would add those together and make it 800. And then let's say I wrote a thousand the next sprint, that would be 1800 for the day. And then you would just keep adding these things in. So this would be 29,000 and then this would be 30,000 and so on. So it's a way to track not only what you're doing each sprint so you can see the data of your averages, but also how far did you get each day? And then also what's the total word count for the entire month? And I like filling that out as well. Then you have a, another alternate thing. Now you don't have to use all these different trackers or just giving you lots of options. And if you look back through some of the older resources in the library, you might find different ones like circle trackers and just different things. So this is a daily one where you put what's my target for the day and then what did I actually get? And then what are your notes? This is a way to track all 30 days instead of just like tracking over here, you're probably gonna just track the days that you actually wrote. Whereas here you can track every single day and you can see what days were zero days and so on. This here is a camp game board where you have 30 days of writing. And so it's basically, you can set a little a little target here. Like I have this little crystal. I put a Hello Kitty on here when I use this and it can be really fun to just move it each morning when you get to your desk. And at the end of the day, you can say that you, you know, let's say I got 2,314 words today. And then the next day I add 
up, I usually will do a little line in the middle and I'll write like what I wrote today plus what my total is so far. And then at the end, you can see how you did. So that's the game board. Then basically we have a meal planner where you can write down breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner ideas. Uh, watch my Preptober series from last year or the year before about meal planning. If you want to hear more about this, I will link to the Preptober playlist in the description box. But if you at least write out some ideas, then you aren't making these decisions as you're working on your book, because the more decisions we make, the less decision making ability we have. So we want all that executive function to go into our novels, not to go into meal planning. So then you have your 2024 camp planner. Now I could have made a Sunday start weekly, but I did not this time. Like I said, just trying to like do a little bit less so that I have time to finish my books and stuff. So this is the same in both planners. It's just, do you have a Sunday monthly or a Monday monthly? So you've got a section here for planning out breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for the week. And then you also have a place to put your schedule and what you wrote for the day and sort of things like that. I've also marked double down days as well as the virtual writing retreat days coming up at the middle of April. And then for actual NaNoWriMo this year, I did a daily planner that had every day of the month. And then you had a chance to say, where did my word count start? How much words do I have left? What's my intention for the day? What scene am I writing? I really liked using this for myself. Like what was your mood, what you're liking about the story and so on. But I didn't necessarily want to put it into here because I wasn't sure if you would be using that or not every single day. So I put it in here with a blank date. So for those of you that do want to use it, you can just print out 30 of these. So if I want to use this, I'll just print this out 18 times because I know I'm writing on 18 different days. There's also a weekly wrap up that you can put in for the four weeks of camp where you can just basically keep track of. So you could actually only use this weekly sheet and not use the daily sheet. Just print it however you like and whatever makes sense for you. There's also just another little note that you can put on your door. I am writing, please do not disturb unless you have chocolate. If so, place it by the door. Another quote back here, as well as a note from me. So if you download this, there's a link to the Preptober playlist, the free resource library, and just some links here to my books and other things you might want to know about me. So that is the printable, but don't forget that there's a lot of other stuff in the resource library, like this plot your novel. So in the, well, let me start here in the Preptober planner from 2023, I did include this working outline. So it's got main character, their normal world. It's basically got a three act structure here. And this, a lot of you gave me feedback that you really enjoyed using this last year, but it basically is a way to help you just sort of think through your plot. That is just a, like a two spread thing quick look at your plot, but you can also download this one, which is called plot your novel that has more about your characters, your goal, motivation, conflict. It has all of act one, two, three, and so on, and a place to put your scenes and different things like that. There's also an editing one, a scenes one. There's one on like world building and writing a series. So just take a look around in there and see if there's anything that can support you. And as always, if you come up with some ideas of like, wow, I really wish you had X, Y, Z, let me know so I can work on it as a series for you guys this year. I will be redoing the plot your novel series this year, and I'm really excited to redo that and the workbook. It should be super fun, but for sure, go and get your camp workbook. So that's my plans. So all told, the final goal for me is finish Vanessa Shaw, get it up for pre-order, finish the final edits, then start working on plot and getting this book done. I'm going to continue to work through the workbook to see if it seems reasonable to keep that goal at 40K. And I'll let you know when I start Nano, if I think I'm still going to keep it at that goal. But basically two episodes is what I want to do. And I want to launch my Ream subscription in April before I go to the subscription for authors conference in May, just to have it done and out in the world. Of course, once that comes up, I would love for you to support me over there. The lowest tier is going to be $5 a month, and then there will be a few higher tiers. So if anybody here <laughs> wants to support me, I would love to have you over there reading that story. It's going to be, I think, really fun. It's more of a new adult story than a young adult story. And I will share with you the process of plotting that story as we move into April. And I'm going to share setting up the story journal, 
setting up the plot, how I plot a serial, and I'll share some, just a handful of Camp Nano vlogs with you as well for those of you that are interested in it. Don't forget too that we do have a Discord server if you want to come join that. And we have the Heart Breathings writing community that is always writing, writing sprints every single day. So if you want support, resources, We've got it all here for you because I truly love you and I really want to see you be successful. So if you have any questions about camp, let me know in the comments. If you want to sign up to get all those free resources, that will also be in the description box below, as well as links to some of the supplies and things that I shared with you today and some of those Preptober videos. But that is it for today. I hope that you're excited for camp as well. And again, I know that some of you are no longer participating in official camp NaNoWriMo or NaNoWriMo stuff, and that's fine. You're supported here regardless of whether you're doing anything official, but this is still a ritual, I would say, or a yearly tradition that I still want to be a part of in terms of getting the writing done and finding this motivation. So you're welcome here in this community, and I'm excited to continue to reach for those writing goals, however we can get motivated to find them. So, all right, all my love to you. I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye everybody.